Now, my friends, uh, you've been hearing Randy tell you about his background and such. You might wonder, why did I invite him here? Because my grandchildren used to go in and play the fascination game with him. And they came back and said, Dad, we, Pops, we had such a great time with this gentleman. They said it was just such fun, and they would always go down. What is there about Randy and his fascination game? Well, as I touched on before, the fascination game is a group game experience where people play against each other in a competition form for winners. What, what's different about my fascination game was the fact that I took it to a level where it became a show. So it wasn't just a game, it was a show, it was a game show, and I became the master of ceremonies, creating all the different events and fun things for the people to do during the operation of the game. So we had the extra things, not just playing the game, but you hit certain lines and the giant fruit game would spin and it would yodel and you got to pick a fruit from the yodeling fruit game. Or we had the spinning wheel where you could guess the numbers or pick the cards on the wheel or bounce chickens into the pots and bubbles would come from the ceiling. So it was, you never knew what was coming next. The game was just a, a, an exciting adventure, and that's what it's supposed to be, because it's supposed to be fun, and that's what we do. So I became the master of ceremonies for the Flippers Fascination Operation. Absolutely amazing, because they loved it. They would come back and always tell me about it. My son said, Dad, you got to get him on and let people know what he does in there and what happens down in Wildwood. With it. Now, you still have your fascination? Yes and no. I was forced to close the location where Flipper's flat fascination was four years ago when my dad became ill, and I knew I couldn't be there 16 hours a day running the game. But since that time, I created a new location at the Boardwalk Mall, which we created on TV. And within this retro arcade, I included fascination. A little smaller scale than the original one which was just dedicated for fascination but with that same ambiance and feel of the fun. And the kids have been down. Becca's enjoying it with all the grandkids and all this. They, they just love it. All right. Uh, you said that uh, you now have are doing this. What else are you doing? Well, I'm running a retro arcade, which has to do with some of those games that I was talking about with the antique nature of the things. It's a living hands-on museum. I hate to use the word museum because you think of just looking at pictures and walking by, but you're physically playing this, so it's a retro arcade. It's neat and it's fun, and people can experience something that is gone from the boardwalk. And the older folks, which I thought were going to be the target market for this type of operation, they walk in and you hear all the time, I remember this, I remember that. And they remember the times when they were kids, they remember the people they used to know, the old guy who used to be behind the counter at the arcades they used to go to in the hotels. And it is a trigger for their memories. It is truly, truly magical. But the kids are the best customers because when they walk into this magical land, they found something you can't find anywhere else in the world and an experience that's gone. So when they try it, it's all new to them. And the stuff was great then, so it's still great now. Not only are they being educated to what they missed, but they're having a great time doing it as well. What kind of games are you referring to? Well, we have all the old mechanical pinball machines with the score reels that would turn instead of just the digital scores. Back then, the games were a little simpler without as much going on in a quick period of time that you don't know what's going on. So you actually used intelligence playing the game. So the pinballs today are much different from the pinballs from 30 years ago. You hear dings and dongs rather than screams and groans. Different adventure. You have the old rifle machines where you would shoot the gun and the little targets would go down again with a ding and a click and a gong. And you would have the feel. They were actually real rifles that were modified into these games. You get to touch these things. You, you can't find anything today that's not plastic and it's not made on a card. The machines represent an era in time when there was craftsmanship, when there was design, when there was art, without walking around with the iPhone attached to your hand. You actually experience the world. It's interesting because as, as I try to recollect to myself, uh, we just don't have those kind of places anymore where we, we had the, uh, where you roll up the ball and it goes in the particular exactly. numbers that you get, a 10, a 20, and a 50. Uh, you have the, the skee ball kind of games, but you don't have the others, they seem to be too far out, uh, that these young people play within their, their own little computers that they have. They play these games and that's what gets them. And, and then, and most of them are all shooting. They're shooting something. 
And I don't like that. I don't, I don't think that's necessary. I like it when the ball goes and it hits a lot of things and you get the things in that. Well, there were a lot of games during our era that were shooting games too, and we have a lot of shooting games, but the difference is when you're shooting a target that is two-dimensional and it goes down with a bell and a ding, it's fun. You realize you're not destroying something. But on the video games for the last couple decades, when you shoot something, you're watching it explode and the blood and the guts and everything involved to it. It's a whole different animal. Now you're not just shooting it to mark a target. Now you're destroying things. You're teaching a wrong message that goes on with it. The, the, the family atmosphere from the amusement business has changed just like the whole world. People need to have fun again, and, and that's what we sell. We sell fun. What kind of games are you, you pushing or promoting today? Well, I promote all the games from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and up. Not so much into the 90s and the 2000s. That's too new for us. But we have ski ball, the traditional ski ball with the old wooden balls, just like was in our period. And you know, ski ball made its debut on the Atlantic City boardwalk. Yeah. Ski balls originally were longer than real bowling alleys with nets that hung from the ceiling and only guys could play them because they had to have muscles to whip the ball down the lane. Over the years, they shrank smaller and smaller because of the square footage requirements. We have the original size ski balls from my era where they're 15 feet long. We've got the shooting galleries with the, the heads that pop up and the, the fun targets that just, you know, you want to see what's going to happen next. We've, we've got the fascination game. We've got group race games in there also where you roll the balls and the horses run, you throw the balls to knock over the furry monsters, you shoot out the star with the machine gun. But the difference is on our games, there's not one winner and the game is over. Every person who plays wins the prize, and not the keychain from under the counter. Whatever they see, every person who plays walks away with one of those prizes. There's never a loser. That's amazing. It's, it's the way it should be. Everybody wants to win. The, the idea is supposed to be that you're there for a good time, not that you're dangling some prize in their face so that one person's happy and everybody else is mad. Everyone should be happy. This is why I'm a bad businessman, because I don't make the money like the other people do, where they have one winner and they, and they let the people go away angry, but I make everybody walk away happy. And that's the magic. And that makes me a millionaire. We'll be right back with a final segment with, for you, and you'll see one of the, one of the bobbleheads that he's brought with him and uh, some of the books in which he's been involved. Don't go away. Keep your doubts set right where it is, and you'll hear more about Randy Spenner. Drive.